Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're on day five of a one week production and I'm taking you guys with me. I want to give you a little bit of peek into the production and I do want to thank Canon for sponsoring this video. We're shooting this entire production all five days, every single shot on the Canon EOC 70. On this particular shoot, it was a really fast paced run and gun shoot. And even though we had a lot of lights and we got a nice studio to shoot in, it's really a crew of either two people or three people. So when the crew's that small, we have to be fast and we have to be nimble. So what that requires for us is a camera that can really keep up with our same pace. So a lot of the things we're doing on this particular production, we require a lot out of one camera. So, you know, one minute we might be shooting 120 frames per second slow motion. Another minute we might be running a multicam production. So that's one of the things that's been really nice for us with the Canon C70 is it's a camera that can be used in all settings. It's not like, okay, we got to get our slow motion stuff, so let's go get a different camera. And then now we want to do our interview setup where we want to run audio into the camera. We've got to get a different camera for that because we need a camera with uh, audio built in. That's the cool thing with the C70. It's got mini XLRs, so you get professional quality audio built right into the camera. It's got a good, strong codec, and we're shooting everything in C-Log2 which means you get a lot of information in the shadows and a lot of information in the highlights. And so once you put your color grade on it, it gets a really nice, natural, high quality look to the footage. Another one of my favorite features about the Canon EOS C70 is the autofocus that's built in. It's really good. And I'll actually show you one of my favorite settings if you wanna come on over. So my favorite setting to put it on when I'm shooting sports is I go to the autofocus settings, which is in this one, and I will put it on whole area AF mode. So that means it's gonna use the entire frame. And I'll put the AF speed, I'll bump that up, and I'll bump up the response. So that is basically determining how quickly it's gonna acquire a new subject. And I'll turn face detection off. So this basically just tracks the whole area. And so whatever I point the camera at, it's gonna quickly acquire that subject. So I'll cut in some footage right now of this particular boxing athlete that we're working with, and I'll show you how great it keeps up. So once again, thank you so much to Canon for sponsoring this portion of the video. As you guys know, I wouldn't take a sponsorship if it wasn't something that I uh, would recommend myself. And if you've seen the other probably 20 videos on my channel, you already know what a fan of this camera I am. So once again, thank you so much to Canon and we'll get right into it for the rest of the video. So I didn't really get to film as much behind the scenes footage on set as I thought I was going to. So we're back here in the studio and I just wanted to give you guys five tips for filming boxing training, or for really filming any type of fitness training that could help you in your productions. Tip number one is break the 180 degree shutter rule. So a lot of times you hear cinematographers talking about if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, your shutter, sh your shutter speed should be uh, one over 50 or one over 48 if your camera can do that. And when you're shooting 60 frames a second, your shutter speed should be 120. Usually your shutter speed is doubling your frame rate. And Generally speaking, if you're filming a corporate video or something like that, it's a great rule to do, great starting place. I always follow that rule myself. So when I'm filming boxing, generally I'll put the shutter at the 90 degree shutter angle, which basically means if you're filming at 24 frames a second, your shutter speed is gonna pretty much be at one over 100. If you're filming 120 frames per second, usually where your shutter speed will be 250, your shutter speed will actually be one over 500. Now what that does is it gives the footage kind of a special effect. Basically it makes it look a little bit sharper and a little bit more jittery. Now, especially when there's people boxing around at the camera or punching, you can see that it looks a little bit sharper. And if you go look at some of your favorite action movies, you'll probably notice that in scenes that they wanna feel really intense or really frenetic, they basically will use the same exact rule and it's not in every scene, it's not all the time, it doesn't work for most corporate videos and things like that, but I think it absolutely works well for boxing and for fitness, so feel free to give this one a try. Tip number two is use your white balance creatively. Now, generally speaking, if you're filming, say, a corporate interview, I've done a couple of videos on my channel that are how to shoot an interview or how to shoot a two-person interview. For all those types of things, if your key light is 5600 Kelvin, Generally speaking, you're gonna set your camera to 5600 as well. That way your skin tones look normal and natural and the background looks normal as well. Now for fitness and boxing specifically, what I personally like to do is I like to choose the white balance based on what I want to feel creatively. Now for this piece right here, all the lights in this scene were at 5600 Kelvin. Now what I chose to do was put the camera at 4300 Kelvin and what it does is it basically cools off the image and gives it more of a blue look. 
Now, when you do that technique, especially combining it with one of the LUTs that I'm using here, which is one of the LUTs that I sell actually, but it'll give the footage kind of a really unique look. It pushes a little bit of orange and warmth into the midtones, but everything else in the image gets really cooled off. Now that's something that I actually really like and I think really works well for fitness. In this second scene here, I lit my subject with a really warm light. Now I didn't meter this one and I actually used gels to achieve the warmth on the, the light. So, but I would guess it's probably around 2700 Kelvin. What I did is I warmed it up in camera and I set my camera to 3800 Kelvin, therefore giving it a much warmer look than what it actually looked like in real life. Now I thought this was kind of a cool technique as well because it really just contrasts well with the really cool blue footage that we were shooting earlier in the day and it adds a lot of contrast to the edit. So feel free to try out some of those white balance techniques in your next boxing or fitness shoot. Tip number three is combining soft light and hard light. Now, a lot of times when you are say shooting an interview, you generally want your subject to be lit with a soft light. Now what that's gonna be is a really nice flattering look, similar to what you see right now on my face. It's a nice smooth transition from one side of the face to the other. Most of the time it makes people look a little bit better. It's pretty flattering on skin tones. But what's cool about shooting fitness is you get the chance to test out some other techniques that you don't always do in just your sort of run of the mill commercial. Now, what I like doing in fitness is combining soft light and hard light. So in this particular scene, we had an eight by eight frame with a quarter, I think it was a quarter silk or a half silk, and basically just a giant diffusion frame. And we had a couple aperture novas pushing some soft light all across the boxer here in the ring. Now from up above what we had, was a much harder light. Now you'll notice what that does is it gives a really sharp, hard edge light to our subject. And now, especially when our subject is getting sweaty, that's really cool because it shows the definition of the athlete. And that's something I really like doing when I shoot fitness videos. Tip number four, it's a short but sweet one. Try out using a hazer. So one of the things I love about using a hazer is I'll put it off in the background. I generally don't like the haze from in front of my subject because then it kind of makes them hard to see. And unless you're shooting like a Halloween or like a horror story or something, I generally don't like the way that looks. What I will do is I'll put the hazer really far back in the room and I'll just let it slowly fill the room with haze. And what it does is it creates just a certain mood, a certain aesthetic, and there's nothing else to really say about it other than I really like the way that it looks. So feel free to try this out the next time you're shooting boxing or fitness, and I think you'll be pretty happy with the results. Tip number five is mixing up your shots. One thing that I think separates a real amateur video from a more professional looking video is the amount of shot diversity. Now that also gives the ability to hold the attention for the viewer as well. Now that can mean you're shooting on a wide angle lens and then you go to a more zoomed in lens and you've got some more depth in the shot. That can mean you go from shots that are really cool and feel really moody to a shot that's really warm. And maybe that means you go from a shot that's really dark and uh, low key to a shot that's a little bit more high key. These are all techniques you can use to hold the viewer's attention. Another thing that I like doing is I'll shoot in real time and I'll also shoot in slow motion. So that's one of the things, again, with the C70 that I like. It's got really nice 120 frames per second slow motion, and it's also got really nice 24 frames per second. And it doesn't crop in on the sensor at all when you use those modes. So that's one, one thing I really like to use as well to increase the shot diversity. A few other things I like to do is I'll have the athlete not only do the main thing that they're doing. So in this case, we're filming a boxer. I won't have him just be boxing the entire time. So what I might have him do is be wrapping his hands in one shot. And then maybe he's kind of slowly warming up. And then maybe he's shadow boxing at the camera. And then maybe in the next scene, he's hitting the bag or hitting the hand pads with his trainer. And then in the next scene, maybe he's doing some fitness activities that are related to the main activity. All these things are just, it kind of creates interest for the viewer. And so you're not just constantly watching the same thing like, okay, I get it, the guy's punching, or okay, I get it. The guy's been shot a box with the camera for like six minutes now and I'm just so over it. So those are some things I like to do for that. Another thing I like to do in terms of shot diversity is I'll change my position in relation to the athlete. I won't shoot everything from that five to eight feet range. I'll do some shots where I'm running and pushing in towards the subject. I'll do some shots where I'm inside of the ring. I'll do some shots where I'm outside of the ring and using the rings to create depth and to create layers in the image. 
And finally, one technique that I include in almost all my fitness videos is a really bold portrait shot. I like to have a shot where the athlete looks directly into the camera and sort of breaks that third wall. I think it creates a really cool, unique look and it can really end the video in a really unique way. Unfortunately, I can't show the full video from this shoot yet because it's not released, but I will try to get that up on the channel at some point in the future. If you found this video helpful, feel free to let me know in the comments and also let me know if you have any other tips. I'd love to know some tips that you guys have that you've done that have worked well for fitness or boxing shoots. If you like this kind of content, consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.